Hi, let's take a look at an example of using calculus to solve for kinematic equations when we're given either the position, velocity, or acceleration. So here, we're given the velocity as a function of time, and we need to find the acceleration and the position. And our velocity as a function of time is equal to 45 meters per second times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t divided by 5.0 seconds. So if I were to graph velocity as a function of time, we're starting at zero, and we are asymptotically leveling off at a maximum value of 45 meters per second. So for an acceleration, the acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So when I go to take the derivative, this 45 meters per second is a multiplicative constant. It can get pulled out front. Here I have the derivative of 1, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So here I need to take the derivative of minus e to the minus t over 5.0 seconds. So I can also pull that negative sign out, that negative 1, out in front as it's a constant. So we have a chain rule situation. Our function as a whole is an exponential function using Euler's number. So when we take the derivative of an exponential function, we get our function, e to the negative t over 5.0 seconds. But then from the chain rule piece, we have to take the derivative of the function inside. And the derivative of negative t divided by 5.0 seconds with respect to t is negative 1 over 5.0 seconds. So our two minus signs that we have cancel out and we have 45 meters per second divided by 5 seconds as our constant outside. So our acceleration as a function of time would be equal to 9.0 meters per second squared times e to the negative t divided by 5.0 seconds. So if we have an asymptotically leveling off velocity, we have an exponentially decaying acceleration as we reach that terminal velocity predicted by this equation. Now the last piece that we would need is to figure out the position by integrating the velocity with respect to time. And we aren't given any information about the starting location for our object. So we won't be able to draw an exact graph here, but we will be able to calculate the general form of the equation to predict the distance that the object has traveled. So, the distance our object travels is the integral of velocity with respect to time. So that would be the integral of 45 meters per second minus 45 meters per second times e to the negative t over 5 seconds squared, both re with respect to dt. So we can break up that integral operation Integrating the first term just gives us 45 meters per second times time, which is what's going to happen in the long term, is we would see a linear increase in position with respect to time as we reach this terminal velocity. In getting there, we would have a term where we have to integrate 45 meters per second times e to the negative t over 5 seconds with respect to dt. Now, that 45 meters per second is a constant. And the derivative of Euler's number is Euler's number. The derivative of the integral of functions of Euler's number is the same function of Euler's number, but we would have to account for this piece up here. Properly in math, we'd say we'd use u substitution, and we'd say u is negative t over 5.0 seconds, du dt would be negative 1 over 5.0 seconds, so that means dt is going to be negative 5 seconds times du. Well, the integral of e to the u du is just e to the u, so we have e to the negative t divided by 5.0 seconds times our negative 5 seconds times 45 meters per second, with that minus sign left over from our original equation, 
So those two minus signs multiply together to give us plus 225 meters times e to the negative t divided by 5.0 seconds plus our initial position. So the second term is saying because of this accelerative term getting from rest to our final velocity, there's going to be additional distance factored in. Now, to know what our constant of integration truly would be, we would need to know the starting location. But in general, we could have just said that instead of our position as a function of time, our change in position is this, then that would be a result saying our change in location is 45 meters per second times time plus 225 meters times e to the negative time divided by 5.0 seconds. Thanks for watching.